Welcome to the Market Edge Tech Talk with Will Pauley and special guest David Blake. We're going to review the market conditions of the past week, as well as longer term trends from a technical perspective, take a closer look at the major indices, and to wrap it up, dig into a handful of individual stocks and ETFs requested by subscribers. If you have questions or want to submit a stock for next week's webinar, email us at support at marketedge.com. Hello and welcome to the Tech Talk for Tuesday, December 6th, 2022. I'm your host, Will Pauly, and I'm here with my co-host, David Blake. How are you doing today, David? Doing good, Will. Talking to you from Ohio today. All right. Let's start off with a look at what the market's been doing this past week. Let's look at the market letter. All right, well, we had another volatile week uh, with the major averages last week. Both the bulls and the bears found something to, uh, to cheer about. Um, a lot of it was, uh, once again, based around uh, economic data and, and, and Fed comments. But we started out the week uh, coming back from the holiday, a uh, little bit of uh, a little struggle to start the thing off. We had demonstrations in China over the weekend, and, and uh, that kind of rattled global markets. You usually don't have a lot of demonstrations there. And uh, I think investors were a little bit worried about how the Chinese government would, would react uh, to it. But it seems like they're kind of letting it play out a little bit uh, to try to prevent some of these lockdowns, which is really, which have really uh, uh, held the Chinese economy back. Now, I mentioned uh, yesterday, we've seen uh, just since uh, it's sometime towards the end of October, um, the Chinese market has, has, has really, really had a nice run. In fact, uh, the China Internet ETF, KWEB, K-W-E-B, is up about 60% off of the uh, October low. So it has just been a, uh, a shot. And if you remember, that low came about when when they when she got elected, and they thought that he was he was going to uh, you know, tighten things up a little bit. That happened to you know. It's kind of one of those things where uh, you kind of sell the news and, uh, or buy the buy the rumor, I guess. Anyway, um, we started, started out with also got some tough talk on on Monday from uh, from Fed presidents James Bullard and John Williams. They were uh, talking more about rate hikes uh, needed to keep. Uh, pressure um, uh, on things, and uh, the interest rates stick a little bit higher on their comments. They keep, you know, pounding the table a little bit. Of the, we're going to we need to keep uh, rates higher for longer. And we had the S&P 500 dropped about 1.58 uh, percent on Monday alone. Every sector was red, and um, uh, investors stayed kind of cautious because uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell was, was out going to speak on on Wednesday. They weren't sure what he was going to say, especially after those two. Uh, had come out. I kind of wish some of these Fed presidents would uh, keep their mouths shut a little bit during the week. They come out and they they all have their their own opinion and kind of moves the market a little bit. But anyway, Powell uh, Powell kind of surprised uh, uh, the the market a little bit. He kind of laid the groundwork out for the central bank to kind of moderate rate hikes going forward. Uh, I believe the uh, CME FedWatch group uh, was projecting after his talk about there was about an eighty percent probability of of the Fed uh, hiking rates a half a point <coughs> at the December 14th uh, announcement. And that, that's probably still going to be the case, although the last two days we've had a little bit of uh, uh, some problems and we've seen rates take higher. But I think that he kind of boxed himself in that uh, most likely a half point would be in. And then I think now in January, they're, where they were hoping maybe they would see a quarter of a point hike, we're back up to a pretty much about a 70% chance of a Another half point rate hike uh, in January too. So, so, so rates are still um, going to wait, keep keep pressure on on the uh, market. But after he uh, you know broadcasted, uh, you know they, they would they would moderate uh, the rate hikes a little bit. We saw the, the stocks take off. The Dow jumped uh, 737 points. Uh, that was about two 2.18 percent. The Nasdaq soared 4.41 percent. Uh, growth stocks were. We're roaring. The Dow hit a seven-month high. Um, it was steady on the market was then steady on Thursday, and then a, uh, a stronger expected jobs report on Friday uh, sent yields a little bit higher again, and the stocks a little bit lower. The problem was that um, we had a lot, showed a lot of wage inflation, and that's uh, one of the, the problems with uh, uh, the, the Fed Fed rate right right now. They want to keep Wage inflation is one of the things that they really can't control very easily with uh, rate hikes because you know you don't give somebody a job and uh, pay them sixty thousand dollars and two months later say okay well now inflation's down a little bit we're gonna we're gonna cut your salary 
that's not going to happen. So wage inflation seem, tends to stick, and that that's going to be a sore spot uh, uh, as they meet here in the, in the next week or so. So anyway, so um, came down uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, the ten-year yield had jumped as high as three seven nine during a week. It ended up uh, settled at three forty-nine on Friday, just below that three and a half percent, which has been a real trouble spot for the ten-year uh, Treasury yield uh, going almost all year. And we had the two-year T bill. It topped out at 455 uh, before it landed at 429 on Friday. So that was, uh, you know, that that kind of settled the market a little bit that they were able to uh, stay below, uh, you know, key key spots of troubled investors in the past. Um, as far as the uh, different sectors went, um, they're they're mostly higher: communication services, cons consumer discretionary, healthcare, materials, and technology were outperformed. Well, energy and financials were the weakest groups. Uh, crude oil prices rallied from a low near 73 a barrel on concerns of China slowdown. Um, they actually closed on Friday around $80.16 at, uh, as NATO tried to put a, a price cap on Russian oil uh, going into the weekend. I'm still working on that. I'm not sure what, uh, what has been the result of that, but, uh, you know, with the, with the rates going up a little bit, we've seen uh, oil prices drop again. In fact, today we hit a new low for the for uh, for the year. Uh, I think it's just around seventy seventy two dollars a barrel or something like that, as, as we're speaking right now, down from eighty last week. So uh, that's um, that's that's causing a little bit of concern. A lot of that is you know as uh, as the rates have picked up here in the last uh, couple of days, uh, recession recession fears are starting to uh, be prevalent again uh, with the investors, and that's. That's always a problem. Uh, technical condition was uh, it, it pretty much un, unchanged last week, and we, we were still positive. Um, you know, we, we had some we had back and forth trading pretty much, and left uh, the indexes slightly higher, nothing big. MACD uh, short term trend gauge it crossed into bearish ground for several of the indexes, uh, but momentum, as we usually measure by the 14 day RSI, it remained positive. But was slowing after the market's rally off the October low. So we're starting to see maybe this uh, as we get up here to, to really start to take out some of these resistance levels. Uh, we, we, I think investors are getting a little bit more nervous uh, as to what what's going to happen there. Now we also um, and we saw the Dow Jones it, it took out its 200-day moving average. The uh, S&P 500 also uh, was above that. But the, uh, uh, in fact, the, uh, the Dow Jones also took out a descending trend line off of the uh, January to October highs, which was uh, uh, pretty much would, would confirm a uh, uh, trend change if, if it holds. But it looks like it's not going to hold here over the last two days. We've got about a uh, five, 500 point, 600 point uh, sell off in here. The S&P 500, it, it, it crossed over above the 200 day moving average. However, it ran into that descending trend line. And uh, just back right up. Uh, the Nasdaq continues to struggle below its 100-day moving average, and that's 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 always a problem when you get a a key moving average, a support resistance level that, that doesn't that either holds or or the thing uh, you know falls below it. That's that's usually a, a problem that uh, a lot of algorithms and stuff like that will will uh, will trade off of that. So that's been a problem with that. Yes, um, and people, I've hunted on Friday's letter. I think I, I said. That, we need to see a couple closes above 40.75 to confirm the a trend change of the uh, for the S&P 500, and we didn't get that. Uh, in fact, as of today, I believe uh, the the, the S&P 500 was right around 40. Let's see, it was right around uh, it was 39.50 before Powell spoke, and we went up to about 40.50, uh, 40.60, and now we're back below at 39.50. So we've done a round trip. On the S&P 500 since uh, Powell, uh, you know, kind of gave the, the, the bulls a bone there for a little bit. That's so that's a little bit troubling. Um, you know, today I, as of yesterday, every, every sector is red. Um, and in fact, uh, we're, you know, we're starting to see some negative divergences showing up in the uh, in some of the different sectors, which also is a, a is a, a bit of a problem. Now, I had uh, uh, as far as underlying breadth goes, it was. It was uh, mostly higher. Uh, it wasn't great, but we did uh, see uh, the NYSE and NASDAQ advanced decline lines move higher. 
And then we actually, for a second week, we saw uh, more new 52-week highs on the NYSE, the new lows. That that hasn't happened for, uh, I think, since 2021. And then we had, uh, uh, we're, we're still making more new lows on the on the NASDAQ. So we want to keep an eye on that. In fact, uh, let's see. Um, okay, did the NASDAQ actually made more new, new highs and lows on Thursday. And that was the first time since mid-August that, that we saw that happen. So. Um, that gave investors a little bit of uh, hope uh, that we, you know, we maybe we could start to see a little bit of a bottom in here. Investor sentiment was mixed. We had uh, uh, the pros got a little bit more bullish, and retail clients got a little bit more bearish. So um, I think uh, the AAII uh, for the, for retail investors dropped from 33 and a half two weeks ago. Now it's only 24 and a half percent bullish. So that's that's. That's still way off of the, the historical average of 37 and a half. So we're going to watch that. We did see the, some of the hedge fund uh, managers uh, uh, picked up on their exposure. That rose to 64.4 percent. That's the most exposure uh, the hedge funds have had to equity since uh, mid-August when they had 71.6 percent. So uh, you know, things are the market was looking a little bit toppy going into the end of this week, perhaps. Um, uh, you know, a lot of us were looking for an end of year rally. You know, seasonally, uh, you, you normally will have a, a pretty good rally here. I'm also starting to pick up some some signs where you were when, when we started to cross a lot of the, the, the buying pressure on the market over this last uh, month has been short covering, where you had a lot of uh, the shorts finally just kind of threw in the towel. They we're not going to get a big big crash to the bottom, and they're starting to cover. Um, I, I think we may, because I was doing some reading on this also, where when you have a, a down market like this, you have two kinds of things that happen in, in December. Number one, if you were lucky enough to start selling out of some positions that you were uh, up in back in January and February and maybe into March, where you had a big profit in some of these high-tech stocks, um, you, you may be, if you bought them back, you may be looking to maybe cancel out some, take some losses off, set some of those gains. So you may see some more selling here over the next uh, week or two that could weigh on the on the broader market a little bit too. But um, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're starting to see some negative divergences that uh, that maybe we can point out at, at a certain you know at a certain time here. You know, yesterday I when we did the daily letter, we had a, a strong ISM services uh, uh, number came in uh, service index. It was at fifty six. Point five versus fifty three point seven. That was a lot higher than what but, uh, they were looking for. October factory orders also were hotter with estimates. Uh, uh, they were up one percent in October. That was um, ab above consensus, and so that pushed the yield yesterday back above three and a half percent on the ten year. And as I said, I said yesterday, every time the ten uh, year has uh, gotten above three and a half percent yield, uh, equities have struggled. That's 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 gone on all year long. And uh, and today we also ticked up a little bit higher again, uh, so we're having a problem here with with uh, you know good news is not good news uh, for the market right now because um, the, the more good news that comes out on economic data means that the uh, the Federal Reserve may have to continue to hike rates a little bit more aggressively than what the market wants to see. The market's ready for um, you know for the Federal Reserve to slow down here and at least pause to see how. Uh, to see how effective the rate hikes have been so far, we did see some some uh, you know, cracks in, in in inflation data here uh, a couple weeks ago. That that helped the market, but um, you don't want to see the, uh, the economic and jobs numbers come in better, uh, you know, be better than expected at this point. We, they they want to see some flattening out of the of the numbers and possibly a little bit of weakness, so they know that uh, you know they can maybe become a little bit less aggressive to, to fight this inflation. So as of, as of, with, with this right now, I, I, I said yesterday, I would keep an eye on that 3.5% uh, uh, yield on the 10-year Treasury. Uh, as long as that stays above that number, I think uh, stocks are going to have a hard time uh, gaining any upward momentum at this stage. And in fact, if it gets much closer, I like say three and three quarters, you probably could see uh, the market um, begin to uh, pick up a little bit more on, to the downside. Okay, so volatility remains an issue for investors despite the VIX breaking below 20 over the last week. In fact, 
In last week's market letter, you mentioned that we've seen the VIX fall below 23 times this year. And in each case, including this week's uh, stocks have sold off. How deep do you think the sell off in the last two days will go? Uh, let's just go ahead and pull up the uh, um, the Dow S and P 500 on the charts. Now I don't know whether we have a chart for the VIX or not. See if we can do a comparison with uh, VIX. Okay. Okay. There, there we go. All right. As you can see on this thing here, we compare it. Okay, going, we, the, the VIX actually fell below 20 on three occasions last year. In February, you see over, over here in February, and we hit a little bit, you know, we, and we hit, we, you see up above that where the S&P 500, it started to sell off. Or start, you know, it, it, just as people started getting a little bit complacent, and stocks had, started heading south again, and then the VIX charged back up. Okay, then in April, it came back down again, and and, and again, we, we hit another another uh, high on the market, and we and we immediately started drifting lower, you know, all throughout the summer. Okay, then we finally get in here in uh, August. It breaks down here about 19 something in there, and again that kept that captured the uh, the August highs. You know, we, we we drifted all the way down in this October lows. Now we're coming back up again. And uh, I think yesterday, the day before, well, sometime last week, we got down to 1906. And so we, it looks like uh, if, if we follow the same pattern, yeah, um, you know, we're, we're probably probably due for a, a bit of a pullback in here. Now, the way things have gone uh, so far uh, here a couple of weeks ago, lately, go, go ahead and just uh, get rid of the VIX on, on this chart. Let's just look at the S&P 500 again. Uh, and we want to put up the 100, 250, these moving average. Okay, you got them. Okay, I think at, at this stage, uh, unless uh, the rates, you know, click, click up a little, up around 3.7 <coughs> on a 10-year, you know, I, 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 we're, we're going to hope that uh, perhaps maybe the 100-day moving average is, is, would uh, provide support. That will be the first first place we look. If that uh, – if that that ends up being a, doesn't hold, of course you'd probably go back and test the test the fifty again. But I think we're gonna probably go down to about to around the uh, the hundred day moving average on this one. Uh, the Nasdaq probably goes down to the uh, uh, to its fifty day moving average. I know that the uh, you know they said that the uh, transports in the Russell two thousand also broke below their uh, two hundred day moving average uh, yesterday. So again, we're we're seeing some. Uh, it's a deterioration in, in the whole, in all, in all, all across across the board with these indexes. I've also noticed that uh, you know one of the things that you look at on uh, market tops is negative divergence, and I, I wanted to sh show you. Uh, uh, we we had, I looked at some charts yesterday, and we have some, actually some textbook um, negative divergence on some of the charts. We'll put an XLE. And this is this is a uh, uh, a sector that I think you know it, it made a new high here. Go ahead and stretch this out so you're looking at it to this little switch to a weekly chart. Maybe pull it out. Go back. Pull it out about eh, about that's okay. That's good right there. Okay. Now if you look at this the 14 week RSI, which is, is up here, you'll see over here where we made a new high. Back in, um, I really can't see the see whether that is. But you know, where, where, the, where that XLE made a new high, then we came back down, we kind of bounced along this 200-week moving average, and now we've made another new high here recently. But when you see that 14-week uh, RSI not make a new an, uh, a higher high than it did on, at an earlier high, that is textbook uh, negative divergence. Which is a big red flag for traders that says you know, we, 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 this thing's probably topped out. In other words, you're making a new a new high, but you're making it with with less momentum, and you don't have that oomph behind the behind the move. And that's usually what happens when uh, uh, you know you're, you're kind of running out of gas when you get to these. Now you can also, if you look at uh, some of the stocks, like say say C, put up a CVX, Chevron. 
Okay, stretch this out uh, so, so it shows about a year and a half also. Okay, the same thing with this. Again, you can see we're at, we're Chevron. We started making, uh, you know, we made a new high here. Uh, you know, I can't see the numbers on the bottom, but you said made a new high. And you had the 14, uh, 14 week RSI started to come, you know, made a high. And then when we made a new high this time in the stock on the weekly chart, it's, it's, uh, way below where it was on that last new high. So again, you have the oil stocks that have had a, had a heck of a good run, but now they're, they're, they're starting, they, they've made new highs with, with less momentum behind them. And when you see this uh, in a stock and index, it's a sign that, uh, you, you, you probably made a, uh, a, 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 a short term or intermediate term top. And at this point, you, you know, if you draw a trend line at the bottom, you might see, you should probably see, um, some of these oil stocks have a pretty good pullback. And by that, I mean, maybe a 15, 20% pullback. So if you're in these in some of these, I think you uh, may want to consider, uh, you know, coming out of them and taking some profits in, in some of those. Um, you can also see if you, if you go and look at the rest of these uh, uh, ETFs in some of the sectors, you're going to see uh, a lot of this uh, where, you, where you have the negative divergence show up, and that's uh, a classic, you know, tech, textbook um, uh, picture of, of, of negative divergence on these things. And as you see that, and if you're in, if you go into some of these sectors and pull up some of the individual stocks that perhaps you own, and you see this kind of uh, breakdown in the uh, uh, in, in some of the technical indicators, it, it's a it's a uh, early warning sign for you that perhaps you may want to uh, may want to start taking booking some profits in some of the, these uh, these sectors that that are showing you where the, the broader sector is actually. You know, getting toppy and you're going to start to pull back. So that's something that I think you, if you know, while you're at the end of the year, you know, you're, you're going to see, uh, you know, maybe somebody's got some nice profits in this where they have some big losses or something else. You might, you might see more selling in some of these big winners here as people offset their, uh, for their gains and losses for, for tax selling. So, uh, that'll give you something to do, uh, for the next week or so. We can look at some of these other sectors next week. Uh, when we come back to see what other ones. I noticed that uh, utilities are also showing a pretty good negative divergence. And uh, on, the, on the flip side, I see on XLV, I see it making starting to make new highs, but it's showing positive divergence. It's, it actually looks like it's uh, the healthcare stocks are actually breaking out to uh, uh, new highs on, on solid strength. So um, at this point, you know, watch. I, I do think you're going to go down, down and test the key moving average support lines here for the major averages and we'll see if they if they're gonna if they can bounce um you know like i say the, the fomc meeting is uh the announcement is going to be on december 14th um at this stage you're they're still expecting a uh a half point rate hike if perchance we see an, another uptick in the uh uh say this, uh the uh, cc cpi or ppi uh, you know, then, then you might, uh, you might, they might start uh, talking about another three quarter point rate hike. If that, if that, that starts to, uh, gain some momentum and, you, and you're probably, you can probably kiss off a, uh, end of the year rally. And what you, what you can do if you look at the CME group FedWatch, uh, site on that. Let me, let me take a look at it right, right here today as we speak. Okay, as of today, they're still expecting a 77% uh, probability for a, a half point rate hike. That that's kind of that's, that's I'm sorry, my that's my my mistake. Yeah, okay, 77% uh, in December, and then in February, uh, at this stage, it's still still a, another half a point rate hike at 50%. So we'll have to see uh, if we start to see any changes in those um, because of that. If, they, if, if the investors start thinking that we're Actually, going to go up to another three-quarter point hike. Uh, I think you'd, uh, you know, the stocks would probably have had some trouble with that uh, because at that point, I think you're you're really actually uh, you know more, more and more people are already calling for a uh, recession uh, in the first part of 2023, and I think the more aggressive the Fed is, the more they're going to kick us over over into a recession, and that that uh, you know where the, the market the market could go you know 10, 15 percent lower. Uh, if we, if we are going to go in a recession, 
uh, you start seeing that uh, roll over. That's that's a sign that uh, you know more and more people are going to say that we the recession is unavoidable. So that's where we are for the, for this week, and you know we can try to do something uh, next week. We'll look at some of the other sectors. All right. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Remember, if you have a question you'd like to answer in the next Tuesday Tech Talk, email it into support at marketedge.com or ask one of our live chat representatives to pass your question along to us for the next Tuesday Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week.